This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Standing Watch program. Are we observing the destruction of the United States of America? And I'm not even talking about the deteriorating relationship between America and its allies and friends. I'm talking about destruction from the inside and the question whether we are bringing about this destruction. Is that destruction self-inflicted? Bloomberg wrote the following on June 29. When writers speak of American decline, they are usually talking about international power. To most Americans, those are distant things that have little or no impact on their daily lives. In addition to worrying about their jobs and livelihoods, Americans must now be subjected to months of images of Italians casually walking around on the streets while they cower in their houses. It's a painful and stark demonstration of national decline. With its high housing costs, poor infrastructure and transit, endemic gun violence, police brutality, bitter political and racial divisions, the United States will be a less appealing place for high-skilled workers to live. That means companies will find other countries in Europe, Asia and elsewhere a more attractive destination for investment, robbing the United States of jobs, depressing wages and draining away the local spending that powers the service economy. Almost every systematic economic advantage possessed by the United States is under threat. If capital begins to abandon the United States and the dollar in large amounts, the currency will crash and Americans will find themselves paying much more for everything, from cars to televisions to gasoline to imported food. Large-scale unrest would undoubtedly result, and in the worst-case scenario, the United States could collapse, like Venezuela. This is an outcome that is no longer out of the realm of possibility. It would be one of the most spectacular instances of decline in world history. And you know, my friends, the decline, the downfall of the United States is prophesied in the Bible, from the inside and then also from the outside. An article on the internet pointed out that the year 2020 feels like a crossroads for the United States. With protests in the streets and a deadly virus that refuses to disappear, our nation hasn't felt that vulnerable and divided in ages. A staggering 83% say worrying about the future of the United States is a big source of personal stress. Also, 72% believe this is the lowest point in the country's history that they have ever been alive to see. Now think about what divides us, and the list actually is endless. Here are just a few examples. The destruction of monuments, violent riots, Black Lives Matter movements, and of course I talked about this last time, gay pride celebrations, fight over abortion with the most recent United States Supreme Court decision, prohibition of church services, and of course the coronavirus and the way we are handling it. California Governor Newsom said on Tuesday, one of the areas of biggest concern remains family gatherings. Where family members or rather households, immediate and extended family members, begin to mix and take down their guards. They may walk into that barbecue with masks on, then they put the cooler down and the masks come off, they have a glass of water, and all of a sudden, nieces and nephews start congregating. Now, maybe his motives are right, but the fact of the matter remains. You destroy a country by destroying the family units first. And that is what we are seeing right now. 
Even the issue of wearing masks has become a huge controversy dividing the country. Newsom also said, science shows that face coverings and masks work. Former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger said, the science is unanimous. Anyone making it a political issue is an absolute moron who cannot read. Well, the fact of the matter is, it's not unanimous at all. Many scientists tell us that face masks don't work. Breitbart wrote on June 19, Far from being unanimous, public health officials have issued confusing and sometimes contradictory statements. Near the beginning of the global outbreak, U.S. experts discouraged people from wearing masks. But now, many are urging the opposite. As a result, masks have become a political football. Reuters wrote on June 19, Resistance to face masks took on a partisan edge after President Donald Trump opposed them, saying that some people wear them to show opposition to him. USA Today wrote on June 19, there is a growing national divide over face masks, which are often cast as either a common courtesy to stem the spread of coronavirus or an infringement of personal freedom. It has led to tense confrontations, especially in Southern California. A state, a country divided, cannot will not stand. America's economy is suffering. We already heard about it in the first article I quoted, but here's an article from The Hour, dated June 24. The US economy, the world's largest, is expected to shrink this year by 8%, based on the effects of social distancing, scarring to global production capacity from the lockdown of activity, and the productivity cost of new safety and hygiene rules. Even the mutual travel ban is no exception. You might have heard that the European Union just decided and declared that American tourists cannot come to Europe for the foreseeable future. Breitbart wrote on June 30, while the EU has maintained the ban was made based on which countries had worse containment of the virus, the movement may be seen as a move towards a tit-for-tat spat with the United States. In March, President Donald Trump banned travel from the European Union over the bloc's failure to contain the spreading Chinese virus. Eurocrats acted with anger, claiming that President Trump had treated the continent as a scapegoat, blaming nationalism for provoking the U.S. travel ban. But what this mutual travel ban is doing is destroying the economies, both of Europe and the United States. We know that many, many Americans are going to Europe each year and spending a lot of money there. But also many, many Europeans have been coming to the United States over the years and spending a lot of money here. And all of that, of course, will be damaging the U.S. economy if that's not going to happen. Europe's decision to exclude the United States was, was allegedly based on, as we have just heard, American statistics about the coronavirus. But how accurate are these published statements and statistics? Because if they are not, if they are overdoing it, then this would be another example as to how America is destroying itself from the inside. Dr. Ron Paul wrote the following on June 29. From the peak in April, death had decreased by 90% and were continuing to crash. With massive increases in testing, the case numbers climbed. This is not rocket science. The more people you test, the more cases you discover. The good news, that millions more have been exposed while the fertility rate continues to decline, 
meaning the virus is getting weaker, is buried under hysterical false reporting of new cases. Unfortunately, many governors are incapable of resisting the endless lies of the mainstream media. They are putting Americans again through the nightmare of forced business closures, mandated face masks, and restrictions of constitutional liberties based on false propaganda. In Texas, the second wave propaganda has gotten so bad that the leaders of the four major hospitals in Houston took the extraordinary step, late last week, of holding a joint press conference to clarify that the scare stories of Houston hospitals being overwhelmed with COVID cases are simply untrue. And then he said this, quite a remarkable statement. Billions of appropriated federal dollars are being funneled to facilities based on the number of COVID cases they can produce. And that is why we are getting more COVID cases. We know hospitals have falsely attributed countless deaths to COVID-19 that were deaths with instead of from the virus. And then the Ron Paul Institute wrote on June 26, the CARES Act does direct a 20% bonus Medicaid payment to hospitals for every diagnosis of COVID-19 and a greater payment again for the use of a ventilator. The CARES Act channeled $175 billion into the fight against coronavirus, including $15 billion purely for treating COVID patients without insurance. And so there's no doubt that accepting or rejecting the advice and the prognostications of our health care experts divides the country. Senator Rand Paul, who is the son of Dr. Ron Paul, said it quite succinctly during a hearing on the COVID-19 response. He said this, It is a fatal conceit to believe any one person or small group of people has the knowledge necessary to direct an economy or dictate public health behavior. We should not presume that a group of experts somehow knows what's best for everyone. Only decentralized power and decision-making, based on millions of individualized situations, can arrive at what risk and behaviors each individual will choose. That is what America was founded on. Not a herd with Washington telling us what to do, and like sheep, we blindly follow. He also said that some of Dr. Anthony Fauci's statements have caused undue fear in pockets of the country and cautioned the public not to trust the words of top infectious disease professionals in the country. He also said that some opinions of scientists not in line with the official party position are being suppressed and their videos are being removed. Now, whatever your position might be in this concept and context, one thing is clear. This country is deeply divided. And division leads to destruction. And the Bible prophesies destruction. It prophesies that the United States of America will be destroyed from the inside and from the outside. And there are reasons for that. We have prepared a free booklet, The Fall and Rise of Britain and America. Yes, America will rise again, but first it must fall. And this booklet explains from the pages of the Bible as to why that is. And one major reason is the fact that most people don't obey God. They obey man rather than God. And so we have prepared another free booklet, Obeying God Rather Than Man. And we should know what it means to obey God. And that brings me to the third booklet I'd like to offer to you today, The Ten Commandments. This booklet, or rather a book over 170 pages thick, 
tells you what it means to obey God. It tells you why America is going to be destroyed. So please take us up on our free offer for these free hard copy booklets. And thank you very much for watching us. Until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.